All right, next example, z squared plus 3z plus 9 equals 0. So this one looks pretty simple. First, we're going to subtract 9 on both sides. You know, we always get that constant term by itself. So that's going to give us z squared plus 3z equals negative 9. All right, so now we do our magic trick. The number attached to the z is 3. And now you're about to see what happens. 3 divided by 2 is 3 halves. And 3 halves squared is 9 fourths. The magic number is 9 fourths. That's the number we have to add on both sides, unfortunately. All right, <clears throat> so that gives us z squared plus 3z plus 9 fourths equals what is negative 9 plus 9 fourths. So I'm just going to do it right here. Think of that as 9, negative 9 over 1. Multiply the top and the bottom by 4. That would give you negative 36 over 4 plus nine over four, which is negative 27 over four. All right. Now, <clears throat> at this point, the trinomial that you have here is supposed to be a perfect square trinomial. In chapter six, I don't believe we ever dealt with a single trinomial that had fractions in it. So I'm going to let you in on a secret, and I'm going to leave it to you to verify that the secret works. Uh, this is, it turns out, a perfect square trinomial. It turns out that this thing can be rewritten as z plus 3 halves squared. Okay. And here's a secret to remember for next time. Remember the magic trick? It has two steps. Step one, step two. The answer that you get to step one of the magic trick is always, always, always going to be the number that fills in that blank, all right? Normally, you don't need that trick in problems like letter A and letter B, uh, but it's really helpful when the magic number is a fraction, okay? So I think we're going to have a chance to use that again and in the next example. All right, so z plus 3 halves squared equals negative 27 over 4. Now I'm going to use my square root property. z plus 3 halves must be the positive or negative square root of negative 27 over 4. Okay, so one thing I'm kind of happy about, it's very easy to rewrite um, well, let's do this first. Square root of negative 27 over 2, right? Because the square root of 4 is 2. OK, but we are going to have to simplify that square root of negative 27. All right, so that's going to give us z plus 3 halves. And now here's what I'm going to do with the negative 27, I'm going to write it as negative 1 times 9 times 3. Okay. Reminds me of what we did in the last section. The square root of negative 1 is i. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 3 is just square root of 3. All right, so that gives you z plus 3 halves equals plus or minus 3i square root of 3 over 2. And if I make just a little bit more room, I can write my answer. So finally, I will subtract 3 halves from both sides. And that's going to give me z equals negative 3 halves plus or minus 3i radical 3 over 2. 
And again, if you're typing this in your online homework, you would type two answers, one with the plus and one with the minus. Okay, so that brings us to our last example for completing the square. 4x squared minus 2x plus 5 equals 0. Uh, if you can do this problem, you can do any of them, okay? All right, so what are the two things that you have to make sure you have in the first step? If there is a leading coefficient, you have to get rid of it by dividing it out. So that's gonna give us x squared minus, let's write this as one half x plus five fourths. And then the other thing is we like that constant term by itself on the other side. Okay, so now we have x squared minus one half x equals negative five fourths. We are ready for the magic trick. <clears throat> The number attached to the x is a negative one half. Uh, let's see. Okay, so negative. Okay, step one. Negative one half divided by two. Remember, dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by one half. So that would give us negative one fourth. And then what do we do in step two? We square the answer to step one. Okay, the magic number is 1 16th. So let's add 1 16th to both sides. That's going to give us x squared minus 1 half x plus 1 16th. All right, now we have to add negative 5 fourths plus 1 16th. The common denominator is 16. We have to multiply this by 4 over 4. So that's going to give us negative 20 over 16 plus 1 over 16. That comes out to negative 19 over 16. All right, remember the secret I let you in on in the last problem? How do you write your factored? perfect square trinomial, you take the answer to step one, which in this case is negative one fourth, and we're gonna drop that right there. So this is gonna factor as x minus one fourth squared. All right, that's a really good thing to check. Multiply that out and you know make sure that it gives you that thing back. Okay, don't just take my word for it. All right, so if x minus 1 fourth squared is negative 19 sixteenths, that means that x minus 1 fourth is plus or minus the square root of negative 19 sixteenths. I'm going to rewrite the square root of negative 19 sixteenths first of all, as the square root of negative 19 over four. Okay, now 19 happens to be a prime number. So the only thing you can do with square root of negative 19 is just write negative one times 19. Okay, so when I rewrite this in I form, it's gonna say I square root of 19 over four. And now, when I add uh, one fourth to both sides, I get my final answer, which is x equals one fourth plus or minus i square root of 19 over four. Whew, that was a workout. You will find, and I'm not just making this up, I've heard this from students after you've practiced you know a good handful of completing the square problems it's really not that hard if anything it's maybe just a little boring all right after a while but I have good news coming up in section 11.2 there are other ways to solve quadratic equations other than factoring which doesn't always work and uh, completing the square 
Okay, but first, let's look at this little application problem. The formula for calculating the total amount of money when interest is compounded annually is A equals P times one plus R to the power T, where P is the original investment, R is the annual interest rate, and T is the number of years. So in this problem, we're going to find the rate at which $2,000 compounded annually grows to $2,880 in two years. So take a, a few seconds and think about how to translate that question into, you know, using this formula, what it is given and what do we have to find, all right? So when I switch over to the tablet, you'll see that I've already done that. So pause the video, try to figure that out, come back when you're ready. Okay, so here it is. Uh, that problem translates into finding R if P equals 2000, T equals two, and A equals 2,880, okay? So if we rewrite our formula with all of those numbers filled in, we get 2,880 equals 2,000 times one plus R squared, okay? All right, so let's uh, solve this equation using methods we learned in this section. So first, let's get rid of that 2,000. I don't think we need to have that there. All right, and if I'm not mistaken, 2,880 divided by 2,000 is 1.44. That equals one plus R squared. Okay, so now I'm going to solve this equation using the square root property. You don't really have to do this, but I have a feeling if I don't, uh, People might be confused. I'm gonna switch the left and the right sides of the equation because we're so used to the square root property, uh, putting the plus or minus on the right side of the equation. So I think I'd rather keep it that way. All right, if one plus R squared is 1.44, that means one plus R has to be the positive or negative square root of 1.44. I think that I probably have enough room to finish this over here. One plus R equals plus or minus, ask your calculator right now, what is the square root of 1.44? <clears throat> it should tell you it's 1.2. All right, so now subtract one from both sides and you get that R equals negative one plus or minus 1.2. So that gives you two different answers. With the plus, it gives you negative one plus 1.2, which is 0 0.2. With the minus, it gives you negative one minus 1 1.2, which is negative 2.2. So what was the question again? It was to find R, which is the rate, the interest rate. So this seems to be saying that the interest rate is either 0.2 or negative 2.2, all right? Well, you probably won't be too surprised to hear me say that uh, only one of those answers makes sense. 0.2 is also known as 20% and negative 2.2 as a percent is negative 220%. Okay. I have never heard of a bank that pays negative 220% interest. I think that bank wouldn't be in business for very long. All right. Okay, so let's throw away that answer. I've also never heard of a bank that pays 20% interest. 
I want to uh, open an account in that bank, all right? But at least mathematically, it makes sense. All right, so the only way you're going to grow your $2,000 to $2,880 in two years is to find an investment that pays 20% interest. And that's probably not going to be in a bank. That's probably going to be uh, playing the stock market or something. Okay. And that's going to do it for section 11.1. We'll see you next time.